Welcome to the Sage 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to be a healer, but load your guns better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this, I know Carbuncle, the Crystal Braves, to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you could do research for your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to draw players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 70 for how you start, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker levels. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card for the video on it. And keep the following in mind. Patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes, or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Sage is a healer all about control. When you can control the situation, the group isn't going crazy with vulnerability stacks and mistakes, Sage tends to have a very easy time of things. So easy that you are specifically encouraged to waste your resources just to make use of the mana regen attached. But the moment things start going wrong, you might struggle a lot. The tank not using cooldowns, the DPS standing in bad, you standing in bad. If you can't keep control of that, you're in for a shock. Sage doubles down on the typical idea of never using a hard casted heal. You have a wide variety of instant cast abilities with very short cooldown timers. Your main ones being tied to your resource, Adis Gall. And uniquely, you're a DPS healer more than the rest. You heal a chosen target every time you do damage to enemies, and some of your kit is designed around this. So now you definitely want to find the balance between healing and doing damage. To obtain the Sage job, you must own the Endwalker expansion. You must complete your level 10 class quest, something you should have done long ago, be level 70, and head to the quest giver in Limsa, south of the main Aetherite Plaza. It's past the Dancer job quest even, if you've not picked that up. Before worrying about the Sage Toolkit, a reminder that you have healer role actions. If you want detailed descriptions of these actions, head to the description or the card in the corner for a video about them. I will otherwise not describe their use here. And this is a very complex job. Please know how to heal before attempting to play Sage. Let's start with some of the unimportant traits you begin with as Sage, just to note about them even if we have nothing to discuss. Level 20, Maim and Mend, and level 40, Maim and Mend 2. Damage and healing are boosted by 10% and 30% at each of these levels. These only exist due to how the first 50 levels are balanced. At these levels, values are so low you likely won't notice a difference without going from specifically level 39 to 40. And above these levels, it's just a passive power boost and an intended part of the balancing. Level 54, Sumonotic Oath, and level 64, Sumonotic Oath 2. Similar to Maim and Mend, this boosts your attacking skills potencies. Rather than making four, five, or six versions of your skills that upgrade, this saves some animation time, and Sage already has some very flashy animations without having an extra six versions of these skills. When sinking to lower levels, your potencies will drop lower. Generally, the advice should still apply in all cases. With those out of the way, let's talk about your base kit that basically all healers have. 
Level 1, Dosis. This is your basic attack, costing 400 mana per use and has a cast time of 1.5 seconds. This does 300 potency of damage to the target. This is what you spam when fighting a single enemy and don't need to be healing. Level 2, Diagnosis. A basic heal, costs 400 mana and has a cast time of 1.5 seconds. The target is healed for 400 potency of healing. You will very rarely, if ever, be using this heal. But this button itself is extremely important. Level 10, Prognosis. Costing 800 mana and having a cast time of 2 seconds, this heals all allies within 15 yams of yourself. This is your AoE, Area of Effect, heal. It heals 300 potency to all allies. Anytime there is party-wide damage to take care of and you don't have other resources, this is your fix. And then here everything becomes less than simple. Level 30, Eucrasia. Before talking about the skill, we have a UI element for this one. It's this symbol here. Upon using Eucrasia, it will light up to signify the buff is active. There's not much reason for this to be here, but hey, it's a good way to see if it's there. This skill also has no cast time, a recast timer of 1 second, and does nothing on its own. What it does do is change the previous three skills into a different form. So let's go over these skills a second time. But first, let me note the following. Global cooldown is 2.5 seconds. All skills on it go on cooldown for 2.5 seconds. Eucrasia has a global cooldown of 1 second. And all three Eucrasian skills we are about to go over have a 1.5 second recast. Add these two together and it adds up to the same 2.5 second recast. And upon using any of these skills, the Eucrasia buff wears off. Level 30, Eucrasian Dosis. With an instant cast and 1.5 second recast timer, this costs 400 mana. Rather than doing damage to the target, it puts a damage over time effect, or DOT, onto the target for 30 seconds. Due to how DOTs work, they do damage every 3 seconds, meaning this hits 10 times for 40 potency, or 400 potency total, if the DOT lasts for the full duration. The fact that you can cast this while moving is a big benefit. You can hit enemies while dodging, or while running along with the tank as they pull enemies. Putting dots on a bunch of enemies as you move is better than not at all. It does add up and help reduce damage later on. And while it isn't that much more damage than a regular Dosis, get used to using Eucrasian Dosis. It gets better later. Level 30, Eucrasian Diagnosis. Once again, an instant cast and 1.5 second recast timer. Eucrasian Diagnosis costs 900 mana, more than double a Diagnosis. This is a cure of 300 potency, but also puts a shield on the target with 125% of the HP restored, or a 375 potency shield. If this is a critical hit, which yes, heals can crit, it will apply two shields of 375 potency. And because critical heals heal a lot more, this is a really big shield. Note the warning text at the bottom. You cannot stack this with itself, Eucrasian Prognosis, or Scholar Shields. A stronger shield than the currently applied one will automatically overwrite and replace the weaker one. When working with your own shields, or when unfortunately being paired with a shield healer co-healer, be careful about trying to spam shields around. You shouldn't be doing that anyway, but your co-healer may already be going for it. This is a very nice skill to use before the tank pulls, or mid-run. The cost may be very high, but we have a lot of resources as Sage. So in big pulls, rather than being expensive, this is essentially a free way to constantly keep your tank at max health if they are taking chip damage. Otherwise, can be an extra layer of protection for tank busters in Trials and Raids or for when that one person is collecting Vuln stacks and is taking plus 50% damage from literally everything now. Maybe the only thing that keeps them alive, if there's any saving them at least. Level 30, Eucrasian Prognosis. 
Same instant cast, same 1.5 second recast. This also costs 900 mana and is an AoE heal of 15 yams. All allies hit receive a 100 potency heal and a shield 230% of the size of that heal or 230 potency shield. Once again, cannot stack with your other shields or scholar shields. And this time, there is no bonus shield for getting a critical hit. This is a very weak heal by itself. Either you want to be using the shield with it, or just not touching this. The 100 potency heal is there to top off any missing HP allies have, and the shield to block some of the damage from any raid-wide attacks coming out. But also, typically, you won't want to be using this anyway. Again, unless your party is collecting Voln stacks that they need a buffer, or you have weaker gear, your other tools will cover the difference on average. That, or you're doing harder content with shields are more appreciated. It's not a bad skill, but if it isn't trials or raids with some mistakes being made, it will see little use overall. Keeping track of Eucrasia is very important if for the dual interactions alone. But due to one Eucrasia skill removing the buff, if you need two Eucrasia skills, you need to press it both times. Can lead to some piano dancing if the situation calls for it. So again, be sure Eucrasia is in a decent spot. Further, the shields of Eucrasian diagnosis spells have an extra effect. Level 66, Adder Sting and Toxicon. We've not even talked about your main resource, but you have a secondary resource. Whenever a Diagnosis Shield you placed on a player is broken, you are granted a stack of Adder Sting up to a maximum of 3. It also comes with a loud chime anytime the shield breaks, something I wish Scholar had. You can only spend them on one skill, Toxicon. This has no cost other than Adder Sting, no cast time, and does 240 potency to the target. It has a 5 yom AoE radius, doing 120 potency to any additional enemies it hits. This sounds like it could be usable in AoE, but not really. Toxicon is your Ruin 2, if you know Scholar. Discrasia, which I will talk about soon, all the way up to 90 is all around better a skill generally. Even when Toxicon's potency changes to be slightly better than Discrasia, the benefits tend not to be enough. I'll talk about this more later, but if you can be attacking in AoEs, focus on Discrasia. Toxicon having no cast time is why it is very good as a movement ability. If you need to move, you can't be casting Dosis. Toxicon allows you to move into position to dodge whatever you need to be dodging, and continue to put damage out. As such, you want to be using it like this most of the time. If you can hit two enemies with it, it's a slight improvement over Dosis. But back to the basic toolkit for now. Level 26, Flemma. This one is a bit weird. It costs 400 mana and no cast time, but does activate the global cooldown for the normal 2.5 second cooldown. However, this has an independent charge time of 45 seconds. Charge time because you can charge up to two flemmas. The moment you use one charge, the next begins to charge. It doesn't end there. Because this is essentially a melee skill, you can hit a target with this from six yams away, which is extremely small. You should be in melee range anyway, but this makes it even closer you need to be. It hits the target for a 400 potency attack and all enemies within 5 yams for 30% less potency, or 280 potency for every extra enemy. This is useful for both single target and AoE. More useful in AoE though. Let the tank grab a big group of enemies and fire this off twice in a row for big damage. Just be sure to target the enemy in the middle of the group so it hits as many enemies as possible. If you choose an enemy at the edge of the group, you might not hit as many enemies. But even then, in bosses this is stronger than Dosis, and just as strong as Eucrasian Dosis right now. It's a good amount of damage, and your damage as a Sage isn't exactly small. These are especially great to use when party buffs are up, so you do even more damage with them. Level 46, Discrasia. 
instant cast costing 400 mana and has a range of 5 yams around yourself. All enemies around you will be hit with a 160 potency of damage. This is your spammable AoE attack, which I mentioned is better AoE than Toxicon, only 80 potency lower on the first enemy and equal in power on as few as 3 enemies. And compare that 80 potency loss to a 240 potency loss if you could have used Toxicon for movement. Anyway, simply put, when there are two or more enemies, use this instead of Doses. On three or more, it is stronger than even Eucrasian Doses. But you should be putting your dot up while you are running with the tank and not in range to be using AoE. Travel time is always relevant. Level 12, Gero, takes a whopping 8 second cast time and costs 2400 mana. This resurrects any fallen allies. This is basically the main reason you will use swift cast as a healer. You do not want to be standing still for 8 seconds casting this. If you even have 8 seconds to stand still, your other allies may be in need of some healing. But if multiple people are dying, you don't really have too much of a choice but to stand there and slowly cast this. This is why you should never purposefully let someone die. You're losing a lot of MP and a lot of time without swift cast. Don't let someone die if you can help it, but that's if you can help it. There will always come a time where you have no choice because people just get themselves killed. And remember to heal your ally after they are raised. They start with basically no health, but they do have 5 seconds of invulnerability. If they start attacking the moment they stand up and die again, make sure to tell them not to do that. Alright, we've covered basically everything at the most basic level. Let's get more into the special elements and abilities you have. Level 4, Cardia. You may place this buff on yourself or a chosen ally, but basically put this on the main tank, which in dungeons is the only tank, and never take it off. In trials and raids, you might swap the target back and forth between two tanks if they're tank swapping and such. But otherwise, you put this on the main tank and forget it. This places Cardion on the target, which means to get healed anytime you do damage to enemies. I glanced over it earlier, but each of your attacks says it has a Cardion heal of 130 potency. This is global across all of your attacks that heal, and not specific to any one attack. If one attack says 130 potency, they all do. And that's per attack, not per enemy, so an AoE only heals one time. What this means is you can put out damage on enemies and heal the tank at the same time. It's very small heals overall, but it quickly adds up when you're using the job properly. If the tank is pulling very few enemies, or even on most dungeon bosses, doing damage is enough healing to keep up with enemy output. Unless the enemies have higher than average damage output, which some rare dungeon bosses do, Cardion is all you need. Of course, if the tank is doing big pulling, or it's a raid or a trial boss, you're definitely going to need more than just Cardion, but that just means you can weave in abilities between your attacks. You can still maintain your offensive, put out big heals as needed, and maintain the tank's HP slightly while you attack. Please, for the love of Railger, don't just stand there, do damage. Healer damage isn't nothing, and you're actively healing by doing damage, and it adds up quickly. Warning, take multi-pulls and wall-to-wall pulls as an example of danger. If you are running with the tank and you want to attack an enemy as they pull, all of the enemies will come after you first. This is similarly an issue people tend to have with regens. As long as you stand on top of the tank at all times, it should be fine. But if you are straying behind, don't attack enemies if the tank is nearing the next group, or you could be the one they go after first. Level 35, Soteria. Not only is Cardia healing a good 130 potency per attack, Soteria is here. On a 90 second cooldown, this increases your Cardion's healing potency by 50% for 15 seconds. That means it goes from 130 to 195 potency. That means every two attacks is almost as strong a heal 
as an entire diagnosis cast. If the enemy damage is only slightly outpacing how much healing your Cardion does, Zoteria flips the table into your favor. This is extremely ideal for trash pulls and immediately after tank busters and bosses with lower levels of constant damage. If a boss is unable to outpace your Cardion healing normally, Soteria should be able to take care of all the damage done by a tank buster. It seems like one of your weaker abilities, and it kind of is in a vacuum, but the fact you're able to just continue to do damage like nothing is wrong is a huge benefit on its own. A dead enemy can't hurt you after all. Anytime you might need just a little more oomph out of your Cardion, pop Soteria and you're good to go. Or even just for a general boost during trash pulls, as I said. Level 45, Adder's Gall. This is where the other main resource of Sage comes in. We can store up to three Adder's Gall, and they regenerate at a rate of one every 20 seconds when we're not at full stacks. These generate really fast when you're not actively needing to use them, and are something you want to be using often if you're capping out regularly. Spending Adder's Gall ends up working out to regenerate 700 mana every use. So if you're seeing mana issues with Sage and you are using Lucid Dreaming on cooldown, start checking how much Adder's Gall you're spending. You have four skills to spend Adder's Gall on. Level 45, Drokale. Costing one Adder's Gall and having a one second recast, this heals 600 potency to the target. This is both your main spender of Adder's Gall, but you want to use last in terms of single target healing. It's a strong heal, but that's all it does. If your tank is low on HP, pop a Drokale or two. However, level 62, Tarokale. This is better than Drokale in every way. Has a 45 second recast timer, but heals 700 potency and reduces damage for the target for 15 seconds by 10%. This is a pretty lengthy mitigation and slightly stronger a heal than Drokale. Using this first means you don't need to use as many other resources due to the tank taking less damage. Throw in a Physis, which I'll talk about later, and it's a 770 potency heal with mitigation, while Physis regens the tank. Absolutely use this wherever you can. Big heal, big damage reduction, it's just too good to ignore. And your Adder's Gall will regenerate fast. And keep in mind, the shield does not stack with Kerokale, which we'll talk about in two skills. Level 52, Ixakale. This is your AoE heal for Adder's Gull. 30 second recast timer and cures 400 potency to all allies within 15 yams. Simply put, instead of bothering with prognosis, if you aren't struggling to maintain Adder's Gull stacks, just throw out Ixakale to heal people up. And this assumes you already used Physis too, since that's stronger. Or if it's a multiple raid-wide AoEs in a row, you can use Physis 2 after the first AoE, Ixacale after the second, and then after the third, the regen will take care of the rest. But yeah, use this instead of Prognosis, unless you're really struggling. And again, I'll talk about that Physis skill later, it just shows how much you can combine skills on Sage. Level 50, Caracole. This is a damage prevention button. 30 second recast timer. This adds a 10% damage reduction to all allies within 15 yams for 15 seconds. Unless you're reducing a lot of damage, this isn't too worth it over Ixacale. Or if Ixacale is on cooldown, use this to reduce the damage everyone receives. This is definitely your worst option on average. It could maybe be stronger than a Drulcale, but you need to reduce 600 potency of healing worth of damage. Keep this idea in mind for later though. Otherwise, is it just a lesser used skill than Ixacale, but can prevent a good amount of damage when used properly? And again, this does not stack with Tarokale. Do not try to use both of these at the same time. That covers our Adder's Gall heals, so let's move on to the rest of our kit. Level 40, Icarus. On a 45 second cooldown and with a 25 yom range, this very speedily sends you through the air to the enemy or party member you have targeted. Did you fall behind the tank for some reason? Hit Icarus, no you didn't. Need to dodge because for some reason you're standing a million miles away from the boss and they pointed a huge AoE towards you? 
No, you didn't. Target the tank, hit Icarus, now you're behind the boss. This is a very useful movement tool. Can send you far, fast. No other healer has this level of speed. The downside is the 45 second cooldown, but if you need this level of movement multiple times within 45 seconds, you're either doing ultimate or need better placement of your feet. Level 56, Zoe. On a 120 second recast, this increases your next spell's potency by 50%. You have 30 seconds to cast any healing spell after hitting Zoe. And let me emphasize spell. We're going to talk about a lot of very strong abilities, but this does not work for any of them. This works on only Diagnosis, Prognosis, and the Eucrasian variants, and something we'll get at level 90. So Diagnosis would go from 400 potency to 600 potency, and the Eucrasian variant 450 potency with a 562 potency shield. Two of them if it crits. You're going to definitely be avoiding using those spells most of the time, as I previously said. But anytime it is needed, this should always be used first. Put Zoe up. A great use I like to do is when the tank is doing big pulls. Anytime the shield breaks and the loud chime of Addisting goes off, I throw on another shield while we are running. When the tank is about to encounter the final group of enemies, use Zoe to put one final shield up one very strong shield, then start spamming Flemma and Discrasia. While this theoretically wastes some of your Cardion healing, it allows the two of you to get into position before the enemies start cutting into the tank's health. Pop cooldowns, prepare your hands for the healing buttons, etc. And you don't have to stop mid-fight to pop Zoe, Eucrasia, and Eucrasian Diagnosis all in a row. Plus that mid-pull Diagnosis could have been another Discrasia instead. This is where Sage being a control job starts to fall into place. Rather than trying to save Zoe for a big mid-pull heal, you specifically control the situation to try and reduce the healing needed later. You get more damage in, which makes enemies die sooner, and not need that Zoe buffed Eucrasian diagnosis mid-pull. That is still an option though, and still falls under any ideas of control. If the tank has weaker cooldown management, you can keep Zoe in your back pocket for the inevitable low HP scare when you're running out of your own resources. It's a matter of which level of control you are going for. The former is typically better in dungeons from my experience, and the latter will see multiple uses in trials and raids. Especially because it works on prognosis for AoE variants of this strategy. And even more importantly, we'll loop back around Zoe at level 90. Level 58, Pepsis. If you've played Scholar, this is your new emergency tactics, but also technically stronger, but can be even more fiddly to use. It has a very short cooldown of 30 seconds and removes any shields on anyone within 15 yams, restoring a fixed amount of HP potency based on which shield is applied to the target. 450 potency if a Eucrasian Diagnosis is removed, and 350 potency of healing for Eucrasian Prognosis. This button is you saying, I need a really big heal right about now. For example, a low HP tank and little to no abilities available. Here is the strategy I use. Eucrasia, Eucrasian Diagnosis, Pepsis, Eucrasia, Zoe, Eucrasian Diagnosis. There's that alternate use of Zoe coming in, which if you use Zoe then Pepsis, you end up using that super beefy shield into nothing. The big issue is getting Eucrasian Diagnosis into Pepsis to work in wall-to-wall -wall pulling. The place where running out of resources will most commonly occur. It can be a bit 50-50 whether or not it works. The moment you hit Eucrasian Diagnosis, hit Pepsis. Any delay and the shield will likely be eaten by the enemies before it gets off. If you do it right though, part of the shield will be used, but the Pepsis will still apply and eat up the rest of the shield. This is likely going to take a bit of learning to use properly there. In bosses, dungeon, or even raid, damage is a bit more scripted and manageable moment to moment, so getting a Diagnosis Pepsis to work is much more reasonable. And because of the short cooldown, you'll almost always have it around to fall back on no matter how bad things are going. And just to emphasize the power of Pepsis, let me compare the base spells to a Pepsis use. 
And given this is the Sage version of Emergency Tactics, this very well embodies the idea of an emergency button over anything. Diagnosis is 400 potency. Pepsis is a total of 750 potency. Prognosis is 300 potency. Pepsis, a total of 450 potency. Level 60, Physis Mastery and Physis 2. Physis Mastery upgrades Physis into Physis 2, which you won't see the basic Physis unless you sink below level 60. Physis 2 has a 60 second cooldown and two effects applied to anyone within 15 yams. The first is a Heal Over Time, or HOT, for 15 seconds. It heals for 130 potency per tick, or 650 total potency. The second effect is 10 seconds of increased healing on the targets. And this applies to all healing, including your off-global abilities. This includes your Adizgal abilities, Tarokale, Drokale, etc. All heals for those 10 seconds. Physis 2 is a very strong heal alone, but combine it with other abilities as needed, and you're getting so much more out of it. Need some really big healing and the heal over time isn't enough? Physis 2, Ixokale, go back to DPS and let the hot do the rest. And because the cooldown is a measly 60 seconds, you should be using this button early and often, especially including trash pulls. Just because this is an AoE ability doesn't mean you should ignore it when the only person to heal is the tank. It'll come back up before you need it in a boss. It makes keeping the tank alive during trash way easier. Again, something like Physis 2, Torokale, and within those seconds the tank will fall low enough for a Drokale. And just to cover it, the sub-level 60 Physis is a 100 potency heal over time for 500 total potency. Level 70, Haima. This is a very interesting new skill type brought in by Endwalker. On a 2 minute cooldown, this is essentially an 1800 potency shield on a chosen target. Yes really, 1800 potency. But there's a catch. Upon putting this buff on a target, they receive a 300 potency shield and 5 stacks of Haimatanon for 15 seconds. When the shield of Haima is spent, a stack of Haimatanon is spent, and a new Haima shield is applied for 15 seconds. Once again, for 300 potency. However, this does not reset the Haimatanon timer. You have 15 seconds to spend those 5 stacks, or 15 seconds to take 1500 potency of damage. If there are any Haimatanon stacks remaining after the 15 seconds end, all remaining stacks are spent and HP restored, at 150 potency per stack. So if there are two high matinon stacks, it will heal 300 potency to the target. So essentially, it heals at half the rate it would shield, for a max of 750 healing potency. Remember, the first shield is automatic. As long as you target the tank and is taking constant damage, most of the stacks should be spent. If it's, say, a wall-to-wall -wall pool, those 1800 potency of shield will quickly be eaten up. But channeled into shields, that's three Drokale's worth of potency that you don't need to worry about healing. In your average boss fight, this won't really spend all the shields. You want to count on that heal at the end if you use it. Throw this out for the tank buster to reduce the damage with the first shield. The second shield might be spent on some auto attacks and three high matinon stacks will remain when the timer runs out, giving a heal of 450 potency. Any further auto attacks will wear out that third shield. Raiding and such, you may not get any more than a tank buster and a single auto attack worn out, since they tend to be cast locked a lot more and not do damage for that duration. If there's ever any single target Auk Morns that hit multiple times in a row, which is very likely to happen in Endwalker as things progress, Maybe then all stacks will be spent in bosses? Otherwise, enjoy the bit of extra healing on top of what it does reduce. Now let's talk about openers. As I say, AoE isn't something you have specific openers for typically, and healers don't have very complex openers on average. So let's just talk about quick the one Sage has. 
pre-pull, Cardia on the main tank, Eucrasia, Eucrasian Diagnosis on the main tank. Dosis, Eucrasia, Eucrasian Dosis, 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 Flemma, Flemma, Dosis, and then it's just Dosis spam from there. The only real thing to go over is this Flemma placement. This is only to ensure it falls under any and all raid buffs. You could theoretically try and fit Eucrasian Dosis under raid buffs too, it may even be better to do it after the second doses, or even third, but that's just getting into min-maxing, and yeah, let's not. And I would normally do a karaoke opening here, but do you really need me to with this one? There isn't much thought to be put in with healer openers. More important is making sure you know how to use the Sage healing kit when heals are needed. Level 72, Offensive Magic Mastery, Dosis 2, Eucrasian Dosis 2, and Flemma. Offensive Magic Mastery upgrades the potencies of a bunch of your spells. Toxicon is up to 300 potency and 150 potency to every additional enemy. And your upgraded skills have improved potencies and new animations. Doses 2 is a 20 potency increase to 320. Eucrasian Doses 2 is 60 potency per tick for a total of 600 potency for the full duration. Better than Doses 2 after 18 seconds. And Flemma 2 is 490 potency, a 90 potency increase. Nothing otherwise changes with how you use these skills. At most, now you want to use Disgracia on three or more enemies only, not on as few as two. Level 74, Rhizomata. On a 90 second cooldown, this instantly grants you one stack of Adder's Gall. This further pushes your need to spend Adder's Gall as much as you need. Don't be afraid to spend, because you're not just holding onto three stacks of Adder's Gall, you have four. This fourth stack might have a long recast over the shorter 20 seconds for stacks one through three, but an unused skill is a wasted skill. Don't be afraid to spend stacks. At minimum, keep the Adder's Gall timer running at all times. And a further way to do that? Make sure you use two Adder's Gall before hitting Rhizomata. Let's say you have two Adder's Gall stored, 15 seconds have passed, and you use Rhizomata. You lose that 15 seconds of progress towards an Adder's Gall. Don't bother using Rhizomata unless you have zero or one Adder's Gall. If you use it when you have two, you'll end up losing some Adder's Gall along the way. Level 76, Hollows. On a 120 second cooldown, all allies within 15 mm radius will receive 300 potency of healing, and reduces 10% of all incoming damage for 20 seconds. That's a very long damage reduction. 20 seconds is nothing to sneeze at. Multiple mechanics in Trials and Raids can go out in this time, and you've already reduced how much you have to deal with. And that's on top of the healing the group from any previous mechanics. Just don't panic the moment people take damage and try to top up immediately. Wait for the next cast bar, then use Hollows to maximize the effect. In dungeons, use this in trash pools. You heal the tank and reduce 10% of the damage they're taking. This is a cooldown you can force on the tank for a long time, no matter how few they are using. They should be using cooldowns, but sometimes this is just how it has to be. And of course you can use this in boss fights too, but likely won't get as much use as on the tank during wall-to-wall -wall pools. And most importantly, this does stack with Karakule and Tarokule. Those two don't stack with each other, but they do stack with Hollows. Level 78, Enhanced Karakule. This buffs Karakule to be stronger than Druokule. It now has a hot attached that heals 100 potency for 15 seconds. This translates into 500 potency of healing. On top of the usual 10% damage reduction, this is guaranteed to be worth more than 600 potency total. You even want to be using this before Tarokale. The reason for this is because of it having a regen rather than instant healing. Use it early into the pool, the moment the tank stops running and grabbing more enemies. When you hit the wall in wall-to-wall. -wall. 15 seconds later, use Tarokale. 
any healing needed within those 15 seconds, you can use Haima, Holos, Physis, Drokale, lots of options for you. And obviously enough, any AoE situations where you could be reducing damage, this is much better than Ixicale. The regen alone is more healing, and that's without the normal 10% damage reduction. Level 80, Panheima. Before you can even use this skill, you must complete all of your Sage job quests. Don't even bother trying to use it until you go through the quests. Now, Panheima, this is an AoE version of Haima. Works the exact same way too, so if you need to realize how this works, go back to that skill. 2 minute cooldown all the same, and 15 yom range. The barriers are worth 200 potency, or a total of 1200 potency of shielding. Only 600 less than normal Haima. Any remaining stacks of Pan Haimatnon, after the 15 seconds are up, are translated into 100 potency of healing. Endwalker seems like it will be using Akmorn types of party stacks a lot. That is to say, stack market mechanics that hit multiple times in a row. Panheima is perfect for these attacks. It will use most, if not all, of the stacks of Panheima. Otherwise, this is still good for only singular or back-to-back -back raid wides. Put this up, let the raid wide be reduced by the first shield, then four shields will expire into a 400 potency heal. The tank will have more stacks spent because auto attacks from the boss will use them up, but that's preferable to the heal since the shields are worth more. And that's the thing, it's useful on the tank, which means you use this in trash pools. 1200 shields in trash is far more useful than whatever tiny amount your average dungeon boss will do to your party. And even then, 2 minute cooldown, it will come back. Haima, Panheima, or maybe even both if that's how strong the enemies are and there isn't another giant pool coming up. Always use at least one of these every pool. They are that strong. And that's the Shadowbringers toolkit. Personally, I felt like Sage was a bit rough to use until I got Hollows. From then on, the job seemed really smooth to use comparatively. That and also, I had more experience by that point. Still falls heavily into needing to absolutely control the situation at all times. Now, due to the nature of healers and it being hard to show how a healer works outside of content, I'm going to show Endwalker Dungeons. I will specifically be picking and choosing footage as best I can to avoid spoilers. But if you are at all afraid of any spoilers to this wonderful finale expansion, come back after you've done up through the level 87 content. Or 90 if you even care about post-game dungeons. Level 82, Offensive Magic Mastery 2, Doses 3, Ecrasian Doses 3, Flemma 3, Discrasia 2, and Toxicon 2. Okay, that is a lot, so let's just talk one at a time. Offensive Magic Mastery 2 is just the trait that says everything is upgraded. Doses 3 is a 10 potency increase. Ecrasian Doses 3 is a 70 potency dot now, totaling 700 potency over the 30 seconds a 100 potency increase. Flemma 3 is 510 potency, 20 more than Flemma 2, 255 potency per every extra enemy. Disgrazia 2 is 10 potency higher, now doing 170 potency per enemy. We're now back to it being stronger than Dosis on two enemies, but still worth Eucrasian Dosis. Toxicon 2 is 330 potency and 165 potency per every extra enemy. Let me talk one last time about Discrasia versus Toxicon. Toxicon is 160 potency higher than Discrasia, and takes 32 enemies to be beaten out by it. But let's just call it a 130 potency gain because your average tank will be pulling multiple groups. But again, consider the situation where if you need to move during a boss fight. A lost use of Dosis is 330 potency lost, but you gain that 330 potency right back if you use Toxicon for movement. If you are so worried about how much potency you're gaining or losing, err on the side of caution. Spend Toxicons enough 
to not overcap during trash pulls, since it is a gain, but don't just immediately dump them all to the moment you get them. If you have three stacks of Toxicon, use one so you don't lose the next possible stack. Then, you always have two available for movement. Otherwise, focus on Dyscrasia and keep your targeting indicator on the tank once you've spent your Flemmas. Can easily throw out Arterocolate or such this way. Level 85, Enhanced Healing Magic. This has four effects. The first is upping your Cardion Power to 170 potency. Every single attacking move does 170 potency healing now, so long as you're putting on Cardion. Diagnosis has seen a 50 potency boost to 450 potency per use. You probably never use this one anyway. Eucrasian Diagnosis has also been buffed. The shield is now 180%, making it a 540 potency shield on your target. That's a lot beefier, and makes a Pepsis use a bit less difficult. And remember, critical hits give two shields. And finally, Eucrasian Prognosis is a 320% or 320 potency shield. Other than the Eucrasian Diagnosis buff, and maybe the Cardion buff, you won't really notice much of a difference. Your heals are doing more, but enemies are also doing more on average. Cardion buff will be catching you up, and the bonus shields, as I said, make Pepsis a little more possible. A little. Level 86, Krasis. On a 60 second recast, this causes all healing actions to do 20% more healing to the target for 10 seconds. So your GCDs, but also Holos, Physis, Tarokale, Drokale, same as the buff from Physis. Basically the only thing from your toolkit that isn't affected, I'm pretty sure it's just Cardion. Which by the way, this stacks with Physis. Though you'd likely never put both up at the same time, but you might. If you're not going to be needing the skills anytime soon, might as well blow them all at once. If you're ever about to throw heals out to the tank, which you should almost exclusively be using Krasis on the tank, use Krasis first to give it an extra 20% power. Krasis, Tarokale, Drokale, or even use this as a way to further boost the power of Zoe. 540 potency diagnosis shield boosted 50% by Zoe is 810 potency of a shield. Add in Krasis, and that becomes a 972 potency shield. Almost 1,000 potency of shielding, and almost 2,000 if it crits. And you ignore the fact that crits do further healing by default. Don't necessarily dump that much into one spellcast in a trial or raid. You want to better spread abilities as needed, but if you're ever saying you have extra abilities sitting around, well, that's one possible combination. Get dumping stuff if you're not using it. Level 88, Enhanced Zoe. Speaking of a combo with Zoe, Zoe now has a 90 second cooldown. You can use it just that much more often, but still not combined with every possible use of Krasis unless you save it. But again, you can combine it with other options as needed or as the fight dictates. Experiment with your combinations. You have so many different abilities to use. Level 90, Numa. Our capstone is a giant laser beam in front of you for a two minute cooldown. It goes 25 yams in a straight line and is pretty thick. It hits every enemy in that line, doing 330 potency to the first enemy and 198 potency to all enemies after the first. But it gets better. All allies within 20 yams of your position are healed for 600 potency. And the Cardion effect of 170 potency goes off. Remember when I said about coming back to Zoe at level 90? You can use Zoe on this. This is a 900 potency heal when combined with Zoe. If you ever need some huge nuke heal, be it for just the tank when using Numa in AoE, or a party-wide 900 potency heal. This can essentially completely take care of even raid level AoEs by itself. So now in AoE, you can Flemma, Flemma, Numa, and not only do big damage to the enemies, but heal up most of any damage the tank has taken. In bosses, just pop Numa after any raid-wide attacks. 
And this is besides having something like Caracalay up, or Physis, or Holos, or Krasis. You have so many options of how to combine stuff as the need arises to keep control. It's just a matter of using them to their full effect and spreading them out as you always have some options. This is the ultimate power of Sage. Other than Numa, you don't really have any straight up nukes. But you have so many options and so many ways to keep control. It's just about finding the flow that works for you to keep control. And hoping your tank knows how to use any cooldowns at all. Thank you for watching the Sage 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those things really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anne and Nidhogg's lay waste to your enemies.